Om Namah Shivaya students, as you have been introduced to the poem, The Duck and the Kangaroo, today we will start reading the poem. Keep your book open at page 97 and follow the lesson. The Duck and the Kangaroo Two friends, the duck and the kangaroo, are about to set out on a long pleasure trip. The kangaroo, though happy to carry the duck all the way on the tip of his tail, is wary of her wet feet. What will the duck do to make the kangaroo feel comfortable over land and sea? Let us find out how they go about it. Say the duck to the kangaroo, Good gracious, how you hop! Over the fields and the water too, as if you never would stop. My life is a bore in this nasty pond, and I long to go out in the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo. So we see that the duck is awestruck to see the movement of the kangaroo. It expressed that the kangaroo could hop continuously over the fields and water bodies. The duck's life was boring as it remained in the pond all the time. It wished to see the world beyond the limits of the pond. It wishes that it could also hop like the kangaroo. In the first stanza, the speaker begins by relaying the words of one of his anthropomorphized characters, that is, the duck. He speaks to another character, the kangaroo, with excitement. The poet uses exclamation points short phrases, end stopped lines and in some cases enjambment in his dialogue. These opening lines launch the reader into the story in medias res, that is right in the middle of the action. The characters receive no introduction but Lear's use of the definite article and proper nouns, the duck and the kangaroo, suggests that these will be only representatives of the species present in the poem. The world is sculpted on a small scale in these opening lines, just two creatures in conversation with each other, even as the duck longs to see the world expand. The duck praises the kangaroo for its ability to hop without stopping. He is jealous of the kangaroo's ability to get around and wishes that he could go out into the world with him. The phrase, say the duck to the kangaroo is repeated at the end of this first stanza. It is also repeated at the end of stanzas 2 and 5. Additionally, almost every stanza except for the second stanza begins with the phrase Say to or say the. Now we are moving on to the second stanza. Please give me a ride on your back, said the duck to the kangaroo. I would sit quite still and say nothing but quack. The whole of the long day through and we would go to the dee and jelly boli, over the land and over the sea. Please take me on a ride, O oh do, say the duck to the kangaroo. So the duck requests the kangaroo to give it a ride on its back. It promised that it would sit quietly and would just quack all day. The duck lists the places that they would visit as D and Jelly Boli. It adds that they would hop over the land and the sea. In the second stanza of this upbeat and humorous poem, the duck continues to speak to the kangaroo asking that it can receive a ride on the kangaroo's back. The duck's dialogue contains examples of alliteration as he tells the kangaroo how he would act and what he would and would not do. There is a good example of nonsense language in the fourth line of the stanza when the duck describes the places that the kangaroo can take him. The duck makes a momentous proposal to the kangaroo 
that is to ride on the kangaroo's back because it longs for an escape from its home pond. The duck recognizes that the kangaroo, because of its physical abilities, has been able to explore the world and the duck longs to experience that liberty. The world beyond the nasty pond comes to represent that ultimate freedom. As such, until the kangaroo empowers the duck to leave the pond, the duck cannot be truly free. Only by having the freedom of movement and the opportunity to see the world can the duck's longings or the longings of any confined and constrained person be fulfilled. The beginning of the poem sets up the experiences of the duck and the kangaroo in opposition to one another. The duck's life is a bore in this nasty pond and it never gets to leave its environment, while the kangaroo has the ability to hop over the fields and the water too, out in the world beyond. The kangaroo has the unfettered liberty of journeying as it pleases, while the duck, trapped by its own physical limitations, can only dream of that freedom. In the second stanza, the duck imagines what it would be like to travel with the kangaroo, hoping that they will journey to the Dee and the Jelly Boli, over the land and over the sea. This language echoes the duck's description of the kangaroo in the opening stanza, Good gracious, how you hop, over the fields and the water too demonstrating the duck's desire for a way out of the pond that will let it overcome all boundaries, whether it is land or sea. Both characters find ultimate happiness when they are able to see the world together. In the final stanza, the pair have hopped the whole world three times round, the duck living its dream of travelling beyond the pond and experience genuine freedom for the first time. It is worth noting that the poet's own nomadic lifestyle may ungird the duck's desire to see the world. The poet travelled throughout Europe predominantly as a landscape painter from the age of 25 in 1837 until he settled in Italy in 1880. The duck's fierce desire to go out in the world beyond suggests the poet's yearning for an escape from the nasty pond where he grew up. We will continue with the poem in the next class. Thank you students. Om Namah Shivaya.